morning and welcome to my channel. In this video I like to talk a little bit about Hyperpixel and exporting sprites into Commander 16. Hyperpixel is a program, it's a paint program and I have been working on this the last few months a little bit. It's a paint program in the browser and it's a pixel editing program. It is not like Painter Pro or Photoshop or anything like this. It is more or less based on the Amiga programs called Deluxe Paint and Brilliance. And the new feature I have been coding uh, lately is a feature to export into code, so into programming code. And the feature I have been creating has been made so it can export into code for the Commodore 64, but also for the Commodore 16. And this is what I want to show in this video, to export into, into lines of data that can be used in a Commander 16 basic program. So let's go to Hyperpixel and get started. Hyperpixel, as I just mentioned before, it is a program that runs directly in your browser. I am hosting it at hypopixel.com. So be careful if you type the URL here, there's a Y in the word pixel. And this is the website from Hyperpixel. And the website has a link to quick start where you can directly start painting. But this is not what we're going to do right now. What we're going to do right now is we go to this blog entry called C64 and X16 Sprites. And if we are here, we scroll down a little bit and we find a special link. It says test it out here. This special link is linking to a beta version of the program where this new feature is enabled. So this is how it looks like in Hyperpixel. Those who have not seen Hyperpixel yet, the black screen is basically your canvas. You can paint on it. And the bar below is where all your tools are. And, and the look and feel is done in such a way that it mimics a little bit the 16-bit computers like the Commodore Amiga. It is not uh, a clone of Deluxe Paint or Brilliance, but it's sort of a mashup between the two with some added features and so on. Let me introduce you a little bit to Hyperpixel before I start exporting sprites. So below you see the toolbar and in the toolbar you see a special section down here where you have all the paint tools. The first one is freehand, so that looks like, like this. You probably have seen this in many different programs. Then you have the line tool, uh, you have the another freehand tool where the dots are not connected. Then you got the, the paintbrush like this. Then you have the square. Then you have the circle. And you also have rectangle and ellipses. And you can also fill things like this. And on top of this, there's a little bar for brushes. So a brush is the thing you're painting with. This is the, the brush bar. And here you can select, for example, a bigger brush. Um, and the brush is used if you're doing circles or freehand, it's the same brush. Uh, you can have a really big brush if you want to. And you can grab a part of the image to be your brush like this. And then you can just start painting with it like this. Let's export some sprites. So to export sprites, we need to be able to edit sprites. And when you're editing sprites, a sprite is a really small picture and you need to know where it starts and where it ends. So you could either resize the picture to be the size of one sprite, or you can use the picture to contain many sprites. We use the option to be able to create many sprites in the same picture. So let's go to view 
and use the tiles to do this. So we can enable the tiles. There's many tiles here. This is because the screen resolution or the pixel resolution is quite high compared to the picture of the sprite that we're going to make. The sprite we're going to make is 16 times 16 and the resolution of the, the picture is 1664 times 864. So let's reduce the resolution just a little bit. Let's use a really low resolution, like Amiga low res, 320 times 200. And now we have um, a reasonable amount of blocks to put our sprites in. Let's clear the picture. Let's zoom in a little bit. So the block on the left here, this will be our first sprite. On the right, we can have, for example, the second sprite, the third one, and we can have multiple rows of sprites. So the sprite size is actually 16 times 16. So let's make sure that the tile size is this as well. And as we see, it's not, it's 30 times 25. So let's select 16 times 16. And then we have the sprite size that we want. So now the thing is to just draw in the sprite area. And we're going to create a picture of Pac-Man. Why Pac-Man? Because this is really, really simple and we can do it quickly. So let's use the, the small brush, make a circle, make it yellow and make a sprite out of that. Okay, so here we have a circle. Let's fill it with yellow as well, like this. Then we make an opening for the mouth, like this, and like that. Let's see, let's try to have it symmetrical. And then we can fill this one with black. This is starting to look a bit like Pac-Man. Let's add an eye as well. Right, okay, here's Pac-Man. So if you want to have a second sprite um, and just modify it a bit, you can just copy it and put it into the next cell, so to say. Uh, if you want to have sprites, more sprites, but you want to organize them in a way that um, on the top, the Pac-Man's to the right. And on the bottom, you have Pac-Man's going to the left. You can do, for example, a little bit like this. Let's zoom in a little bit. You can use the next row to have the Pac-Man's going the other way. Like this, for example. Okay, so when Pac-Man is moving, uh, he's opening and closing his mouth. So let's fix that. Then the first sprite here is having an open mouth and then the second sprite will having a closed mouth. So I need to fill in this again. So I will just copy the, the left side of the Pac-Man and I will just mirror it and put it right here and then the mouth is closed again, but it's not completely closed. So let me create the little opening here. Like this. Then we remove this yellow. Sorry, these black dots that were there. Not supposed to be there. So now we have a Pac-Man with an open mouth and with a closed mouth. And when we export it, we will export it in 16 colors. And the way Hyperpixel works, it works in it works in true color. So it has the full range of 24 bit color, but it doesn't use indexed colors, but we can fake this. So how do we fake this? We will select the 
C64 palette and we will use those colors in our Pac-Man. Oops, that was wrong. Now when we export the sprite, it will look in the um, it will look in the palette to find the color for each pixel and then it will use that index to put in the data and that way you can have the indexed colors that are used in the Commander 16 and yeah so since we're using 16 colors and not just 8 let's make some changes to the, the sprites let's add a color here and orange why not orange so we can put some shading in here so it looks a little bit nicer could do like this for example um, so basically the lower part of the pac-man is going to be a little bit darker and we can use dithering here like that Oh, almost done yeah done okay so now the sprite is done now we can export it first we will export this sprite and then we will export that sprite so file export tile as code this is the way that you export the sprite so file export tile as code okay then you go into this little dialog and then the dialog on the right you see the grid where you can move around and select different sprites to export like this and let's export this particular sprite first so the tile size we don't need to change we have already done that it's 16 times 16 it says here the color info is two colors but this is actually using more colors so we're going to use the export format uh, the color format which is 16 colors then we want to export it as basic and since it's commander 16 we will not use decimal but we use hexadecimal it's a bit more convenient in some cases so the export format basic data hexadecimal and the line starts at row 5000 and the step is one so the first line will be 5000 then it will be 5001 5003 etc and the only thing then left to do is click ok so when we have exported it the data is here in a text window we can just copy it and then we can paste it into the commander 16 emulator so then we enter the data directly in there so here's the emulator we just do ctrl v and here's the code Let's clear the screen, list, yeah, here it is. So this is the first sprite. We cannot run it like this because we need boilerplate code. So let's add the boilerplate code and let's do that right now. So I prepared a little bit boilerplate code in the background. Let's clear the screen and let's paste it in here, right? Now we run it, yeah, here's the sprite. So let's have a look at the boilerplate code for a second. So on line 100, I swap to the lower screen. On line 101, I go to a subroutine to read the sprite. And this is on line 1000, it's just a simple for loop. It's reading 127 characters. This is the length of our data. It's reading them into the variable px and then it's poking them to bank zero address 4000 plus y. Then it does a next and then it does a return. Then I go back to line 102. Here it goes to line 1050 where I have another subroutine and this is to initialize the sprite. It starts here may look a little bit daunting but it's not that daunting really so poke five 
no, not poke 5, poke 9f to 9. This is the control register for the sprite where you can enable sprites or not. So basically setting the flag, the bit that is at hexadecimal 40 will enable sprites. And then on the next line, there is a control register where you can set two things. The first thing that you set is the, um, the mode of the sprite, which is 4BPP, 4 bits per pixel, which basically means 16 colors. And then after that, we have the address. And the address, it's starting at 4000. And this is why we're poking all our sprites in the address 4000. You see this on line 1003. On the next line, there's a more control um, parameters being set in FC16. We do not do collisions. We don't care about a set depth. Um, we took this as a default value and we don't flip the sprite. And on 1064, this is where we set the dimension of the sprite and the palette offset. And the palette offset is zero in this case. So we start with the palette at zero. And then we return and then the sprite exists on the screen. So then the last thing I will do here at Um, the last thing I will do here at line 103 is to position the sprite somewhere in the middle of the screen. And there's a subroutine, it's at line 1070 and it uses two input parameters x0 and y0. And there is more poking ongoing here. On FC12 we poke part of the x variable, on FC13 the other part of the x variable. So we have the high byte and the low byte. On 14, we, um, on FC14, we poke the y variable. We don't use two bytes here because the maximum um, is below 256. So we only need one byte for this demo. Okay, so then we have a sprite on the screen that's standing still. So let's make it move now. And how can we make it move? We can make it move by looping through the X variable. So if we do a for loop here before we call the positioning, then we should be all good to go. Right, then everything should be in place. We do clear screen and we run it. And let's see how it works. Yeah, it works. The sprite is moving, but very slowly. So let's fix that. Let's make the delay a little bit um, quicker, let's say 70, and then we do a run, and let's see what happens then. Yeah, it goes a little bit quicker. It, it doesn't go really, really smooth, because it's an emulator, and my um, laptop isn't that quick, so it has problems keeping up. But the principle is here. On the hardware, it should go much, much smoother. So the next thing we want to do is we want to insert the other sprite and make it animate. We go back to hyperpixel and then we close the export. We do another export and we go to the next sprite. Then we change the tile size, no we don't need to do that, that is 16 times 16 already, the export format into hexadecimal and the color format into 16, and the line numbers we don't want to overwrite, so we use 6000, step 1, and then here we have the code for that, we copy it, we go back to the commander 16 emulator, we paste it and let's clear the screen, let's list it and see if we have it all. So the first sprite is starting at 5000, it's here 
and then the second sprite is starting at 6000. So we need to read all of this extra data into memory. So we can just continue reading for where we left off. And instead of having two for loops, we just have one for loop and we continue until 255. Let's see if that works. It should say out of data if the data is not matching up. But now it's working like it should. Uh, screen two again, so I can have a look at the listing. And since we're not interested in data, we will just list into 5,000. So let's create a screen, list to 5,000. And then we should change our code beginning from line 1000, sorry, beginning from 103 until 106. So 103 is fine, 104 is also fine. We need to insert some lines there. So we run again. Yes. Here we have our Pac-Man, beautiful. So yes, this is how you can export the sprites from Hyperpixel directly in the Commander 16. And yes, you do need to do a little bit basic coding to get the boiler plate code up and running. Um, but if you have that prepared somewhere, then you can just use the sprites that you draw in Hyperpixel. Okay, that is all for today. Thank you very much for listening and see you next time.